Blessed be the God of our salvation. Who then bears our burdens and forgives our sins. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. I 
I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I call upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my wrongs. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house. In the midst of you, O Jerusalem. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. For I have received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night that he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks Peter. Peter. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judah, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, 
you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor, the, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Lord Christ. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The lesson from the Gospel of John this evening concludes with the verse I began this evening. This evening is all about sacrificial love and how this unconditional love is modeled by Jesus. Surprisingly, hours before he is betrayed and deserted by his closest followers. In fact, the word mandate comes from the word mandated, which Jesus commands his disciples or he ma and mandates them and us to love. This love is not only to love the way we have been conditioned to love, but growing up to love growing up to love as Christ loves. We're to love the way Christ loves, not always as the way we were conditioned. This type of love is not about feelings, but it's all about choices. To love as Christ loves is a choice that we are called to make in the strength of Jesus Christ, the one who humbled himself by washing the feet of his disciples and dying on the cross. Jesus mandates that we love. In our consumer-oriented and narcissistic culture, I would imagine that many of us might become a tad defensive or self-righteous when I share that Jesus mandates that we love one another. None of us like being told that we must do anything, especially love one another. This has been increasingly, this, was, this has been virtually impossible to do at times this past year as we have experienced quarantine and not being able to gather in church. We have not been able to hug one another at the peace, and we've not been able to receive communion next to one another. It is difficult and downright hard to mandate that we love one another by looking at a computer screen on an obnoxious amount of Zoom calls since early March of 2020. But mandated we are called to do as Jesus exemplified in the Gospel reading from tonight. As I read the passage from Exodus and the Gospel of John, I began to recollect the past year and where we were this time last year on Monday, Thursday. To be quite honest and frank, this time last year I was paralyzed by my own anxiety and fear. That is why it was my decision to scale back Holy Week a year ago. We did the best we could, but we missed an opportunity to shape Holy Week last year around what we, were all, we all were feeling. COVID had begun to devastate parts of this country, and each day brought more infection, 
more hospitalizations, and more death. We are told to stay inside and only go out when necessary. I know that my emotions were razor thin, and I could cry or feel despair or sadness at the same time. I remember many sleepless nights and questioning my ability to lead during a pandemic. I imagine that many wondered where I was as I thought that myself. The pandemic last year in many ways was a Passover moment for many of us. What do I mean by that? The story of the first Passover and Jesus' command to love one another that he practiced by being a servant to his followers, by washing their feet, are both stories that are set in the midst of conflict and death. In Exodus, Pharaoh reluctantly allowed the Israelites to leave Egypt after God had sent plague upon plague upon Egypt. Pharaoh finally had to let the people go because the people of Egypt were dying. In the Gospel of John, Judas is about to betray Jesus to the Jewish authorities who arrested and tried Jesus and condemned him to die on a cross as an outcast. I think it is important that I state this because it prepares us for the next three days. That is that God comes to us at our most vulnerable, takes us into himself, and loves us even when we are afraid and full of uncertainty and in some cases near death. That is why I think COVID might be a Passover story for us today. We have had to learn and we are still learning how to navigate and be a community of faith that looks different than it did a year ago. Out of hardship and violence, something new does emerge. We see this in the story of the Exodus and in the life of Jesus as he overcomes death in the grave on Easter Sunday. One thing this year and the lessons this evening has taught us is that we cannot take what has happened this past year and the story that we participate week in and week out for granted. Today, tonight, the focus is on Jesus and his being handed over to die. Before he was handed over to the authorities, Jesus handed himself over to his disciples, becoming vulnerable in their presence as he washed their feet and offer the words of communion we hear every Sunday. Do this in remembrance of me. Each Sunday we remember what happened this night in an upper room in Jerusalem. As Jesus handed over to his disciples, we are to hand over, we are to hand over today the story of these next three days. What I mean by that is we live into the story. In many ways, we hand the story over to God so God can protect us. Just as Jesus handed over to his disciples his mission, we are being handed the same mission. We can't wash each other's feet this, this night, but Jesus washed the feet of his disciples including the feet of Judas, who then went out to betray him. We are to freely hand over the love that Jesus mandates we give to others. We can't hold on to it. We are to hand it out to others. We are not to hold on to our lives. We are not called to hold on to some story we think is real, but rather the lives we live, we are to give away. We are to open our hands and arms to God. This has been a difficult year to do this. We've been isolated from one another, and this isolation and not being able to get me together has caused us and sometimes has broken us apart. Coming to church is not the same, and yet this night we are called to love one another even through Zoom and Facebook and YouTube. Jesus mandates this night that we are to embody love, even when we don't feel like it. We are called to live lives of grace and offer encouragement instead of judgment and criticism. 
We are to see in the bread and wine the door to eternal life, and not just something that we do on Sunday morning in order to feel good. This past year has been a year of Passover. Now let us prepare ourselves to enter the promised land through the risen body of Christ and commit ourselves, our souls, and bodies to be the body of Christ in all that we do and say. In this way, we will follow the command to love one another. May God be with us as we live out this command to love as Christ loved us. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine on them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church. Give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
All things come of thee, O Lord, thine own have we given thee. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to be God thanks and your presence. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, proclaim the glory of your name. subject to evil and death. You in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Only speak the word of Christ, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, in this wonderful sacrament you have given us a memorial of the passion of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant to us who have received these sacred mysteries, the will to be the servant of others as he was servant of all, who gave up his life and died for us, and yet lived and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come to the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass until I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking no rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand.